Hello scholars and families and welcome back to your literacy videos with Miss Cherney. I hope you all had a really great Tuesday and this is your Wednesday video for May 27th, 2020. For this video you will need your printed literacy packet or a blank sheet of paper. I'm gonna be showing you how to complete your chart for today's video with a blank sheet of paper, so stay tuned for that. Today, we are thinking about our text, what do you do with a tale like this? And we're going to be organizing information about three animals so that we can write an informational paragraph later this week. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I wanna share with you what your packet looks like. So here's your packet for today, just a reminder. I messed up on the days, so this is for Wednesday the 27th. We are going to be thinking about the animals, a platypus, a hippopotamus, and a chimpanzee. To refresh your memory of the text, please go ahead and reread the text by either clicking on this YouTube link or going to the YouTube link that's posted in the Google Classroom, or better yet, please go watch Miss Rossi read you this book that I will also link next to this video in my Google Classroom post. Now, once you have watched that, I would like you to come right back to my video so we can talk about how to make our chart. Welcome back to my video. So for those of you who have the printed packet at home, you can go ahead and fast forward for just a little bit while I explain how to make this chart on these next few pages with just a piece of paper. Also, before you do that though, please, I designed this so you can rip this page out and that way you don't have to flip back and forth and back and forth. So you should have some space on this page and on this next page so that you don't actually have to ruin any other parts of your packet. You can just rip this page right out. So go ahead and do that now. Now, if you don't have the printed packet, I'm gonna be showing you what you can do. So to make this animal evidence organizer, just take a blank sheet of notebook paper or printer paper or whatever you would like. And the first thing I'm gonna do is draw a really big T. So I'm going to draw one big line and then another line like this. One line and then another line. Whoop, let me go a little bit bigger. One line right here and then another line going down. And above that first little section, I'm going to write animal. And above the second one, I'm going to write feature. So here I've written animal and feature. So this is gonna be where I name my animals and this is gonna be where I write the information about each feature. So our first animal is a platypus. You are gonna write platypus, P-L-A-T-Y-P-U-S. That's a tricky one to spell. And so right here, I will write my information about the platypus and I will also draw a picture of a platypus right here as I'm completing my chart. The next one is hippopotamus. H-I-P-P-O-P-O-T-A-M-U-S. And the last one is chimpanzee, C-H-I-M-P-A-N-Z-E-E. -E. Wow, I couldn't have picked any harder words to spell, couldn't I? Okay. So now that we have our animals down, this is where you would write them. You would include a picture of the hippo here and the chimp right here. Now you are all ready to get started with the video. So I'm really excited to dive right in. The first one we're going to do together. So let me share my screen. Here's our literacy packet. So remember, if you are working in the printed packet, this is what you would be filling out. And the first one we're gonna start with is platypus. So the text tells me a lot of information about the platypus. Actually, we're gonna start with this page up here. Silly Miss Journey. 
the author has a zoomed in picture of different noses. And I see the platypus nose right here, which shows me a wide, flat, gray nose. So this is the information that I would first include on my evidence organizer. So I'd have a draw, I'd have a picture of a platypus and I would write the words wide, flat, gray nose. And then I would draw the picture of the bill or the nose. I'm gonna show you how I did that. So here is my platypus nose picture right here. I labeled him nose, you can see that. And I wrote flat, wide, gray nose. And then over here, this is my picture of the platypus. Take some time now, go ahead and get that information on your chart. Don't worry, I'm gonna post a picture of my whole evidence organizer with this post so that you can always take a look at the finished product afterwards. Now the next thing that we have is information in a picture. So we have information in this picture of the platypus. And this information tells us that a platypus has a nose that digs in the mud. So that's telling me that the nose is gonna be wide enough and flat enough to dig in the mud. So that might help inform your picture that you draw. Now in the packet, I've included some more information about the platypus. So you can see that link, or you can see that um, photo in your packet. Now it's also back here in the back of our book, and I'm gonna read you what the text says about a platypus. So listen closely. <clears throat> the platypus, a very unusual animal, lives in streams, ponds, and rivers in Australia. It's a mammal, but it lays eggs. Whoa. Its feet are webbed and the males have poisonous spurs on their back. Platypus poison probably wouldn't kill a person, but getting spurred is very painful and can be deadly for some animals. The platypus closes its eyes underwater and uses its sensitive bill to detect or find faint electric pulses emitted by its prey. Then with its bill, it sifts through the mud for these small fishes, frogs, and insects. So what it's saying is small fish, frogs, and insects, they're emitting or giving off these signals and the platypus is finding them. Platypuses are usually about 20 inches long and weigh about five pounds. So there's some information about the platypus. If you would like to see that information written down, it's right in your packet. I will show you in just a minute. But I'm also gonna show you what my literacy packet, or my evidence organizer looks like now. So I've included poisonous spurs and webbed feet in my chart. Now, let me show you the literacy packet. Here we go. Here is this information, feet are webbed, poisonous spurs. Please go ahead and add your favorite information to your evidence organizer. You might love that it detects fish, frogs, and insects. You might love that it closes its eyes underwater and uses its bill to find things. You might wanna write down the color. So go ahead now and record the details about the platypus in your chart. I will meet you back here when you're done for the hippopotamus. Nice work. Okay, so take a look at the hippopotamus on this page. What do you learn from the hippopotamus on this page? So let's first look at the words. If you're a hippopotamus, you close your ears when you're underwater. Now, what else can we notice about the hippo? Its size, maybe, its color. What do you see? Go ahead and write down some of the details that you see. Now, I've also included a picture of its ear. Why? Let's find out. I have written down some information about the hippopotamus 
because I'm also going to read you, just like the platypus, something more about the hippo. So a hippopotamus is easily sunburned and spends much of its, much of its time underwater. These large animals, nine feet long and easily weighing 3,000 pounds, live in Africa and graze at night or eat night at night on grass and other plants around the lakes and rivers where they spend most of their time. Hippos close their ears and noses when they go underwater where they can stay as long as 30 minutes at a time. So please pick out your favorite information about hippos. If you wanna see them in words, it's right here in blue. I'm also going to show you what I wrote down for hippo. So here's my hippo picture that I drew. I wrote that they close their eyes underwater, that they are big and gray, and that they sunburn easily. Oh, I also have a picture of their ears right here. So that is showing me that these are the details that I would want to include if I was writing an informational paragraph about hippos. Now the last one is a chimpanzee. And I am gonna read you the information about the chimpanzee, but I would like you to do chimpanzee all by yourself. So that means after I read you the information of the chimpanzee, please go find it in the literacy packet and write down on the chart some features about the chimpanzee that you hear and see. So let me read you parts about chimpanzee. Chimpanzees are the human's closest animal relatives. These intelligent or smart animals live in the forests of Africa and are typically five feet tall and 135 pounds. Like people, they have an opposable thumb. That means that they can pick things up with a thumb that moves. Unlike us, they also have an opposable big toe. This allows them to pick up and manipulate things with their feet. They eat fruit, leaves, insects, and the occasional small animal. So think about those details that we just heard. Now let me share with you some of those details in writing so you can see how things are spelled. So here's a close up of the foot. We can see that a chimpanzee feeds itself with its foot. We have a picture of a chimpanzee for you to help you draw your picture. And I've included some of my favorite information in this box. So go ahead now, take some time, record your details about the chimpanzee's features. You can pause the video here so you can still see this information. I will meet you back here for your next video. Really great job today figuring out these different animal features. And I'm wondering which animal you like the best. Do you like the platypus, the hippopotamus, or the chimpanzee? I think my favorite is the platypus because I haven't really heard enough information about platypuses until now. So that's why it's my favorite. Now, I hope that you had a really great time with this video and I can't wait to see you for tomorrow's video. Here's just a reminder that I will be posting a video and you will have work this Friday. This Friday, we are going to be writing our informational paragraphs and so get ready to do so. All right, I hope everyone has a really great rest of your day and I will see you next time.